you decide to become the $10 million, the $100 million, the billion dollar person, and then you push forward and you just own the fact you're like, it's okay that it's not yet, but you don't necessarily get there unless you internally say, I am that person now. I have accepted that role in my life and now I am chartering a different course. It's freaking everything everywhere all at once. You have wonder what you would be able to do if you were the ultimate version of you, right? You would then have an easy time creating what you want. And yes, effortlessly enjoying life too. Now, you may know this already, the influence you have over your reality is far beyond what you've been told. Soon, you realize that your outer world is merely a mirror of your inner world. And we're here to connect the dots for you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to God Welcome back to God Mode. Now this episode, we're going to be talking about a very special topic that I think a lot of people are interested in. Uh, it's a question that people have in their mind, whether it's at the forefront of your mind or in the back of your mind. I think we've all asked this question. And it's the question of how do you have confidence if you've had zero success? Hmm. How? It's tough, man. <laughs> well, yeah, if you have nothing yeah. to go off of, you're like, what reason would I have to feel confident right now? Yeah. I, I work at McDonald's. So this episode is for you. If you're interested in gaining greater confidence, if you feel like your success compared to those around you or, or your competitors or in the industry that you want to enter or excel in, you feel like your experience is not as relevant as strong, as competitive, or it's also for you, if you already are doing great, but you're entering into the next level, and those who you play with, those who you work with, those who you compete with, are at a whole different level. And you feel like even though you've done tons, but compared to those peers or the people around you, you are teeny. This episode will be for you. Hmm. Yeah, to follow up with, uh this and what I said earlier, it's tough. I think it's tough if you allow yourself to get trapped in labels. Hmm. Mm, tell us more. How do you do, how do you define success? Right? It's going to be different. Like when I first met you, William, uh, I remember you asked me, "Hey, what would being uh, successful look like for me?" Right? And at that time, I had a definition that I would look at now. I'd be like, "Wow, what a small thinker!" Really? Right? So my identity of myself now versus five years ago, I have a different definition of success. And that's just me. If I met you, you, we all have different definitions of success. So I think it's tough for someone if they get trapped in a label in their definition of success, and if they're not willing to change that label and then change, uh, change more importantly, the source codes, the decisions, the beliefs that go into the label of success, right? We talked about it before the show a little bit. Hey, if you're working at McDonald's right now, I get it in America, maybe you're not going to be defined as that's super successful. All good, right? But if you're in, you know, a third world country and you're begging for coins on the side of the street, you may consider that you're more successful than that individual, right? And there's not a judgment based on that person and what's going on over there. It's just a contrast frame. So if you get trapped up into this, what is definition of success? You got to be willing to expand that, be open to be challenged with that at all times. And I think that's where I would say it's tough first if you just get trapped with that. Of course, there's other tools to push you beyond that. But if you're not willing to be challenged on, hey, my definition of success is X, Y, Z, and can it be changed? That's where imposter syndrome starts to creep in. Yeah. So, so, wow. you're, so you're saying tough because they're fixated on a certain frame of reference on what success is. And they're comparing themselves with others that are more successful. So they feel less. Yeah. And that can feel tough, right? I mean, and that's why I say it's tough if, right, because I didn't finish, if you allow yourself to get trapped up and not willing to change or challenge your definitions. And if you want to say like, oh, I don't have any success, it's like, okay, I'm sure everyone in this world has done something right at some time, right? You've done something well at some point. At least one thing. At least one thing, right? <laughs> Did you tie your shoe well? Yeah. Did you walk to the class well? Did you spell your name right? Okay. There's a process, there's a program that went into it. So you got to, just like we teach an upgrade, you got to begin to bring out the sensory acuities, 
uh, that go into it, the decision-making processes, that is going to help one figure out, I've done something right before. There's a pattern here. What do I need to recognize? What do I need to figure out how to bring that pattern into something else in my life? For example, when I first met William, I was doing okay in real estate, right? Like I would have months and if you guys don't know my story, wholesaler, fix and flip, some multifamily at the time back in 2018. I would have 25K months, had 100K month. This was profit for, uh, excuse me, revenue uh, for the company. And then I would have months that would be like 5K. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> what, what, what am I doing? <laughs> like I just had like a six figure month. Like what's going on the right highs now? and lows. Yeah. And mm-hmm. people could say like, you get trapped in the definition. Oh, that's just real estate. Or that's just the entrepreneur oh, way, right? That's the way the market okay, was. Okay, okay, okay. That's important. So I got caught up and trapped. Well, my success in real estate is just going to be like this. Because everyone else who I'm trying to model in terms of their success, you know, the comparison, the imposter syndrome. and downs. I'm huh. pulling those from them. And I'm like, Dang, oh, they're going good. ups and down. I'm pulling it to me. All good. I didn't know what I know now. I didn't understand about modeling. I didn't understand about how my neurology is very adaptable and flexible. So I was just taking in information we all do this it's you know our survival mechanism of how to continue move forward the point of that is i allowed my definition of success to be based on other people's success and other labels they were giving to me so i formed my own presuppositions around how success is so that's where it gets tough if you're not willing to be challenged and that's why what i love about upgrade is we're continuously challenging it this guy over here will challenge me continuously, and I love you for it, but there are some days where I'm just like, <laughs> Rose yo, is down man. here pushing <laughs> buttons. He loves to do it, but I'm, we all grow for it, so we're happy about it. We're Maybe good. not in the moment, but then we grow for it. It's like, thank goodness we'll push that button. Wouldn't have it any other way. But there's sometimes my unconscious mind is like, what is this problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. And I think if, if you're new to the show, context is really important. Like as Michael said, he had fantastic success in the real estate business, and now he's helped thousands and thousands of people as the COO and as one of the, the lead coaching figures in the Upgrade ecosystem. William, and the founder of Upgrade, has had tremendous success. In fact, I had a moment the other day. We're filming a commercial for one of our clients. I call you, and I'm like, hey, can I borrow your Ferrari F8? And you're like, yeah, word. And you just show up with it. I'm like, what is our lives, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, like I, I worked at the world's largest YouTube channel for a couple of years. Now we've got this agency, this studio, we have clients. And so it's like, if you're wondering who we are, this is your first time at God Mode. We don't know everything, but we are keen on sharing with you the things that we do know, the experiences and the successes that we have had and the trajectory and the path that we're walking right now is freaking awesome. And so it's like, what can we learn and share with people that we're not saying it's 100% right or that we're going to fix all your problems, but there's a really good chance that by the end of this episode, like and subscribe every time you get the notification, download your latest cheat code because there's a really good chance that on the other end of this episode, you're probably going to get something that'll at least give you a new perspective or at least give you some sort of inspiration. Like I think about this and I, I said this before the episode started, I was in my car driving and a car pulled up next to me and man it was a supercar and i thought oh, what i'd give to have that supercar mm. but then i didn't realize that there was a, a guy on the sidewalk and the guy on the sidewalk was actually watching me in my car and he looked at my car and he said man i'll give anything to not be on this bike but then the guy on the bike was being watched you know by a guy at the bus station yeah. sitting there going i would give anything to just be able to have a bike mm-hmm. so i could get around on my own terms that was me (laughs) it was not (laughs) you you were in the the f8 (laughs) then the guy on the bike or the guy walking didn't even notice there was a gentleman sitting in a wheelchair and the guy in the wheelchair said i would give anything to be able to just walk to a bus station and so the contrast if you're if you're in the cycle of comparing change that c word change it from compare to contrast if you can establish like a really beautiful contrast Mm. you're going to suddenly like have a whole your circumstances may not like change right then and there, but your framework for it will. Like compared to somebody, you're probably in a really good spot. And that's a that's a blessing. That's not a knock on them. That's like a hey, reframe. Exactly. You know? Yeah, it's what you said, not a knock on them. It's just a reframe for your own definitions, right? And I love this fact that shout out Tyler gave us here because it is 90, what does it say? 93% of people believe self-confidence is critical to professional success. So they know having confidence is good, right? And they realize that if I do this, if I feel like this imposter syndrome, it's not helping me. 
Well, what you just said, get out of the comparison to the contrast, that's going to push you forward past a little imposter syndrome. And this is what this company is about, not just imposter syndrome. We want to give you tools that you did, weren't considering before. Hmm. We want someone to be get out of what William calls the binary thinking because it does get us trapped in. It either has to be this way or that way. And to go back to the real estate with me, I thought it had to be this way and then that way to, to get my success in real estate. And it was taking a physical toll and an emotional toll in other areas of my life that I was unconscious of. So I'll go back to what I said at the beginning. It's tough if you're not willing to be challenged about your presuppositions and your beliefs about success. Say that if you one get more time. It may be tough. And it may feel tough. How do I get confidence without, quote unquote, zero success? If you're not willing to challenge your own presuppositions and beliefs around the definitions and labels you have as success. Dude. And if you go to contrast, like you were bringing up earlier, um, I think it's a very powerful first step that we can give here on the podcast. <laughs> I did door-to-door sales, man. I remember like I got dropped off in Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm 21. This is 2013. I'm wearing this stupid polo. I'm wearing like beat up Nikes and they minivan drops me off and then it sails away around the corner and I'm like, I'm just in some freaking neighborhood and no one wants me here. And those guys in the van that just dropped me off, my sales team, they've been doing this for four or five years. They have mortgages, they have cars and they're successful and they're good at it. I'm like, what am I going to do? But then I was just, I just started knocking. I just started doing the thing, bothering people, eventually figuring out how to work with people. And I realized that I may not be successful like right now, but I'm doing something hard and I believe that if I start at least doing something hard, I'm taking one step towards more success. It doesn't mean I have a resume or something amazing or some number to show you, but I'm choosing to feel like the path I'm now walking will lead me to success. And that's important. That did something for me. Did that get you out of the, um, like when you were doing that, that process, was there thoughts about comparing yourself to other people's success or were you still just focused on, I'm going to do what I'm going to do to grow? Well, I looked at them and I, unless they're like a flipping genius, there's a really good chance that they're no smarter than me. Mm. So there's just no reason to assume I couldn't have what they have. So it was like, I looked at them and I, instead of like comparing myself, I used them as a case study. Like, look, that guy can do it. Mm. It could, it could just as easily be skewed the other way. Oh, I'll never be as good as that guy. I used to think that way. Like I, I never played sports. I would see athletes and I'd be like, that guy's amazing. He's so strong. I'll never be that way. But that doesn't help. Instead, I go, this is exciting. Look at that guy. Now I know that that's physically possible. I could be that way. Look at this guy having success. Now I know it's physically possible for me to be that way. Sure, there's outliers. There's people that are born with trust funds and there are people that uh, had successful parents and those parents had a very hands-on involvement in guiding somebody and the foundational layer of their life yeah. to say, here's what you do. Here's how you set up these funds. Here's how you charter towards success. If you've got someone uh, holding your hand really from day one, that is an awesome advantage. Um, the inverse of that though, is I find that a lot of successful people, like including all three of us, kind of came from nothing. And not that there was a chip on our shoulder, but there was no, you couldn't do anything wrong because you hadn't, there was nowhere to like, you were starting at zero. Yeah, I mean, it's that dichotomy and rich people, not all rich people have this conversation, but I've heard wealthy people talk about like on either Joe Rogan podcast, uh, Lex Friedman podcast, guests are like, hey, I came from a lower economic area. I didn't have as much growing up and that drove me to success. Yeah. Right? I was so hungry. I want that for my kids, but at the same time, I'm so freaking wealthy and my kids go to these <laughs> private schools now and they're eating brie cheese and you're just like, <laughs> how do I, how do I drive it for them? So it's like, you're driving for success because you want to have all this wealth to give to your kids, but then you also want them to still have the tools to get it. So they feel like they earned it or something like that. Yeah. And that's where, you know, it goes back to that binary either war thinking where you got to be able to have both. Mm. The you day I started both. eating, eating brie cheese. I Let's knew just, I made it. <laughs> I was going to say, my, Will's going to say something about brie cheese. I forget the guy who said it. He said it was so funny. He's like, yeah, man, it's like, I got two black kids who are going to private school eating brie cheese. You, you know, I've never had brie cheese before. <laughs> I got to make more money. I didn't know what it was. I first time had it. I was like, this thing exists. 
and I am just finding out about this cheese. <laughs> it is delicious. It's really good. Yeah. Blue cheese fan here. So a quick recap for those of you who are watching at this point and listening is that if you found yourself feeling zero confidence because you think that you haven't had the experiences to back up your confidence, you're likely using labels. You're labeling yourself in a certain industry or in a certain environment, and you're like, because of this industry, success has to look this way. And so that's what Michael has been saying. People trap themselves in these labels, and, and then they compare themselves, as Brady's been saying, right? Who are you comparing it to? And it reminds me of a statement that uh, Bruce Lee made famous was be like water, my friend. And take, what, what's important is after that, he said, take what works for you and discard what doesn't work for you. So when it comes to comparing yourself or contrasting yourself, the way I like to see it is if you compare it with other people and you get negative emotions, you can discard that negative emotion of jealousy or envy. But you can take on the inspiration of, oh, it is possible, like Brady said, it is possible somebody's doing it. I can learn how to do it. And so you can take on what gives you that ability to achieve it and, dis and discard what doesn't. And I think one of the biggest things that people don't realize is that success is literally just a label. And along with the label, I think everyone should listen carefully right here, along with the label comes consequences if we take on the label. If we take on this label of success, in our own perception, we might have feelings of success, feelings of freedom, feelings of, you know, we have access, feeling of abundance, feeling of confidence, feeling of happiness. We have these, some may call it foreordained or preconceived or presupposed emotions that are attached to the label success. And if we take on that label of success, we take on the consequences, the emotions, the, the identity. And what Michael and Brady has been challenging all of you to do is what if you can have those feelings? Because even if you haven't had the experiences, emotional states, emotional states, does not require specific events to occur for you to have them. You can have them at any time. You can actually transfer emotional states. You've been in a room where someone's laughing so, so much laughter in the room that it begins to become contagious. That feeling, right? That, that energy. And then you, who weren't even in the mood for laughing, all of a sudden find yourself thinking it's funny. It's the same thing when it comes to the feeling of success and or any associated emotions. Now, here's a strategy that's useful. If you find yourself having zero confidence because you think you have had zero experiences, the trick is, who are the people with the feelings of success, free, feelings of freedom, feelings of abundance, feelings of wealth, feelings of happiness, feelings of confidence that you can surround yourself with so you can experience it by osmosis. And along with those feelings, because emotions and feelings and states are highly contagious, but it also is the best predictor of human behavior. So if you find yourself feeling lack of confidence, oftentimes it has less to do with your lack of experience. It has to do with your lack of environmental support and the people around you feeling confident. So you should look around yourself and see, oh, Maybe those around me lack confidence. And that's uh, one of the questions that we have here is, can you trick your brain into confidence? I'd rather you not trick your brain. I'd rather you leverage your brain because it's very powerful. What William just said is the key to do it. If you're feeling like I got to fake it or trick my brain, that's not where we want to be. We want you to get into an environment like William's suggesting, and then your brain will do what it's naturally going to do. It's going to adapt. It's going to adapt to the people in the environment, the energy in the environment, the language in the environment. And the language is massively important when you're looking to build your confidence. I work with a lot of people who are like, oh, I am trying X, Y, and Z. Trying, huh? 
Mm. How's that going? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's everybody says that, right? Yeah. And it's okay. I even it, catch myself still. I still catch myself too to it. And I would say many of us do it, right? Because it's something that we were taught growing up at all levels, right? There's really no mass population of, hey, this is the understanding of emotion, language, and how correlated they are with uh, our beliefs and our decisions and all that. I would say the most wealthy people in the world probably still get tripped up, right? They have probably imposter syndrome from time to time. All the time. The wealthier, oftentimes the more insecure at some level, right? Even Mark Cuban, there's a lot of stuff. If you listen to that new episode on him and Lex, there are all kinds of stuff that linguistically I picked up on. I hadn't heard him long form like that. Mm. And there was a lot of strange stuff. I'm like, that guy's a billionaire. Everyone knows him. But there were a lot of linguistic patterns, a lot of ums in very strange places, a lot of bizarre flexes that he didn't need. He's Mark Cuban, you know, but he's sitting there. Yeah, that guy was saying that, well, I'm on my private jet. So ha ha up yours. I'm like, what a strange thing to say. Because for him, it was just everybody feels that at some point. Yeah. And, you know, we don't know. Mark Cuban could be having an off day, right? Yeah. So, again, he, he's a successful guy. Yeah. But people are still people where they're going to feel this emotion. What I would challenge someone, especially if you're considering working with Upgrade, is that that feeling that William's talking about, contagiousness, it's freaking awesome mm. once you rewire the neurology, the software of our mind, and you get to the point where it wants to be around other people, Right. I used to have what we call confidence without zero success, uh, even though I grew up kind of with a family that I wouldn't say I came from nothing, just to give mm. my exact story. My, my uh, uncle was a very successful real estate investor. My grandfather Your as well. Um, so I saw success, but I still had this definition of I didn't earn it. So it wasn't mine. Mm. So it was pushing me away in different areas of life. The point where I'm going with that is You don't I, have to earn it. Huh? You don't have to earn it. Earn, I got rid of that word, but I do like to use the word prove because I want to prove in a sense that it's working. I want to see the evidence. Uh, I want the evidence of me putting in the the work ethic, right, along with my design to be proven into the physical plane so I can get the evidence to keep going on. So rather than earning, I like to prove. That's me. That's cool. That's cool. The language, though, comes back to it, right? If I'm not using the appropriate language, how am I going to stay motivated? If I'm using language of like either wars and like it's just like that, sometimes it happens, <laughs> whatever. It's like it. Yeah. Then it's going to, I'm going to have that confirmation bias to go off and find that in the environment too. So, very powerful here, what we do at Upgrade. Change your language, not, William says this all the time, it doesn't just describe, it defines your reality. Then it'll be tough not to be easy. Yep. And then you'll feel like uh-huh. that feeling of contagiousness where you're going out and you're meeting new people, right? Like when I get around ballers now, I'm excited, like literally excited. I'm like, I can't wait to just listen. I'm just going to soak up like a sponge right now. I'm going to listen for any small little cues. I'm going to feel any energy I can from this any person. Any little clues, give them here. Yeah, I just soak up in the wisdom. And that's a contagious feeling because you're like, I don't care if this person is. I, I'm glad there are billions of dollars net worth with me. I'm grateful I'm in this room right now. Let's soak this up. Yeah, not like, oh, man, like I don't freaking deserve this. Yeah. You know, some people's head. My head used to go there. You know, I don't belong in these environments, in these rooms. People are insane. If they knew who I was or what I was worth, they'd be like, get the hell out of here. You know, those thoughts are gone. So much of that, like I went through the training and I realized one of the things I was saying out of like humility, like I was trying to like play it down was like, oh, well, but I do that because I'm just an asshole. And I would say that in some sort of like self-deprecating way to be like, I'm aware of myself. Mm. And so I'm like not perfect. Like shocker, name one. It's person okay that to is. be self-deprecating as long as you don't actually feel that way. Because mm. sometimes it can come off as a joke, but if you if it's genuinely, if there's like a hint of you not feeling like truly, I'm good, right? Then it will come off as kind of an a, being an asshole to yourself. That's what I was doing though. Like uh, I was internalizing as like, oh, I'm a bad boyfriend. Oh, I'm an asshole. Whatever. It's just how I am. Then. You taught me, it really like rang my bell, the pink elephant principle. It's like the simplest thing. We haven't talked about it in a minute. But if like you're listening right now, I say, hey, uh, don't think about a pink elephant. The pinkest, drunkiest elephant you've ever seen is just there in your mind. Like, what the hell is that? Your brain, English specifically, like I know two languages, two and a half, you know, like four different dialects of Mandarin. And then like, so 
you get the framework of learning another language going, oh, symbols, that's how it works. So with English, the f- concept of don't or delete or negate, that like it doesn't make sense with our human brains. So I say, don't do this. And it goes, I have to invent the pink elephant and then cancel it out. Don't think about the pink elephant. So when we talk with people and it's like, yeah, like, what do you want? I'm like, oh, I don't want to be a failure. And I don't want my family to think like Ooh. I'm not working hard enough. And I don't want my partners to think that I'm not going to give it my all. It's like, there's just a whole lot of don'ts there, brother. Mm-hmm. And the second that that control, the first time you breach that in your head, you go, whoa, I like think that way a lot. I don't want to get sick. Oh, I don't want to work anymore. I don't, you're like, dude, like everybody does this. Like I, there's not a single person that came out of the box pretty much not doing that. But to breach that idea and realize, whoa, it was pretty unconscious. It's like a, it's like an English cultural thing. Is to grab that by the reins and say, control your words. This way here is a tip of the iceberg, but also is a place where one can become elite. Mm. And here's what I mean by that. Majority of the human race don't know what you just said. <laughs> um, they don't understand it. They don't know. They never even heard of it. They don't know, right? If they see their kids doing something they don't want, they're like, don't do that. Yeah, right? don't touch the hot stove. And it's okay to say that as long as you follow up with what you want their, their attention to turn to. So keep your hands in your pocket and walk over here. So now, clear. if someone's like, hey, you know, stay away from the kitchen to a child, <laughs> right? Every kid wants to go in the kitchen. They are still, the focal point of the language is still the kitchen. So it's the same thing as don't, right? Well, majority of the human race don't know this. Uh, and then those who do, very teeny percentage who know it, don't practice it. And then there's maybe 0.001%, if, if that actually practices consistently. And the beauty is that group tends to find themselves having far better state control, I've observed. Amongst the students that we've trained, who are really good at that, they have superbly superior state control. And those who can control their state find themselves having greater success in general because it's not like a moment thing. It's in general, if they can control their state better, uh, and I don't mean like just not having negative emotions. I mean successfully controlling both positive, negative emotions and everything in between and beyond to their advantage. Mm -hmm. So they can leverage positive and negative emotions if needed. They are in control, not being controlled, right? And those who are with superior state control have better communication, better empathy, better, I mean, cooperation, better execution, better everything. And then what you find is their outcome is exponentially more powerful. And over time, these people will compound that. And if that skill were to be passed down to their next generation, they will accumulate ridiculous wealth. I think it's an inevitability because wealth is an extension of self. So someone who's able to accumulate wealth and create success, it's really their ability to create that extension of themselves in the physical. Now, listen carefully. This is the key part, I think, for the listeners and viewers. How is wealth the extension of self? self? And how is that extension coming from the mental plane into the physical plane? through our communication. Yep. Wow. So what you said is one of the keyholes in which one can go through to gain elite status in this world. Because what is influence anyway? What is wealth accumulation? What is passing on generational wealth or getting partnerships done, creating more success, closing deals? These are all ability to influence and how they use their words and what they think about is the, the source code, as Michael mentioned earlier, it's the source code that extends into the physical. And that transfer of wealth, you can curate the environment too. So if we go back to the example of uh, the people that I talked about having the dichotomy or dilemma, hey, I'm super successful, but I came from nothing and I want my kids to kind of earn it in a sense too. But what you just said about the transfer of wealth, they're not just transferring money, they're transferring the lessons they learned along the way 
to the children through the language that they choose to use. So it would be more powerful for them to be trained on the appropriate language of how to transfer that lessons and the skills and the knowledge, oh, right? That's so awesome. Because that's a massive transfer so of wealth. Important. And then they can curate the environment as well. It doesn't have to be, oh, they're on the streets or whatever it is. To like a challenge. You can still create a challenging environment for a child, uh, and it can be in a wealthy, affluent env environment. Hmm. Check this out. You guys will find this funny. I was talking the other day, and I had an attitude. And then both my kids yelled at me, Dad, change your attitude. <laughs> sounds like your kids. That's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's good now. Be. That's right. Amazing. It was. I was like, <laughs> "Oh, okay, yes, yes." Little five-year-old, little two-year-old, talking smack. Oh man, I can I can see Giada. Oh man, uh, she's, <laughs> she's good luck. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has a combination of some of the best things in both. Anyway, she's got a stare too. Like, like I've I've taken the Giada stare when she's been like water. And just like the stare, and I'm like, oh, I should get her water. <laughs> like, I demand your action. It's pretty powerful what she's mastered. And it's interesting is the, the spectrum in which she can become so demanding, yet it peers through the, the resistance. And then also on the other side, she's empathetic. So she knows when someone's not feeling whatever they're feeling and then she can change her tonality unconsciously wow. to match you before you even know what your tonality will be, which I'm like, ah, oh, that's something to learn from. And that's a transfer of wealth that has no price tag, in my opinion. It's mm. one of the things that I've respected watching you as a friend uh, be a father over the years because I was there when I wasn't there there. But I was uh, in the okay. room. <laughs> He's been sitting with us. He I was, was I met Max when he was very young, right? Yeah. So I met you at your very early stage of being a dad. And I always appreciated the perspective that you were transferring not just money, not just material items, not just experiences. You're transferring the linguistic uh, passion and the linguistic control over the emotional state to your children and the wealth. So one of these mm. questions here is how does upgrade help be people become more confident? Pretty clear at this point, guys. We teach you how linguistic training controls your emotional state. And if your emotional state is more powerful, as you said, what are the things that you're going to be better at in your life, right? You'll probably, even if you have zero success, and if you're a listener right now, I'm doing the air quotation marks because I don't believe in zero success. This is why you should watch it anyway. Yeah. You should be watching on YouTube. It's sharing on, this. You get YouTube on Spotify now. It's Subscribe insane. now. It's extremely cool. Instagram, all this stuff, right? Yeah. Are we on TikTok? I don't know. We are. Cool. This guy, Eric Spofford, <laughs> Spofford, Spofford, I came across him because Monty works with him. And oh, yeah. he Monty's made this awesome. post. Monty's awesome. He made this post and he said, uh, I used to think that uh, once I reached $10 million in net worth, I would feel like a $10 million man. But he's like, the, the he's undervaluing himself. Well, exactly. Right. But his point was, you have to feel like a $10 million man or woman. And then if you internalize that, even if it's not there, you're like, I am a $10 million person, just haven't earned it yet. Hmm. The way to get to that benchmark and then the $100 million is by internalizing now through no obvious reasons beyond simply, I want it and I'm just going to choose to deserve it. Even if I made mistakes, even if I have not been a perfect person, you decide to become the $10 million, the $100 million, the billion dollar person, and then you push forward and you just own the fact like it's okay that it's not yet. But you don't necessarily get there unless you internally say, I am that person now. I have accepted that role in my life and now I am chartering a different course. It's freaking everything everywhere all at once. Mm -hmm. I am shifting into a different dimension of like what I accept for myself or like what I'll do or what I'm willing to go through. Like I had to knock door for five years and then two years as a missionary, I spent seven years. Has anyone listening spent seven years doing any one thing? Cause that takes persistence. So I'm not saying do that. I'm saying accept that your goals will require that you become a persistent person. And so it's okay if $10 million doesn't spring out of a hole in the ground overnight, you're persistent. You're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Why? Cause you just decided that that's the case. And like I was thinking about persistence, Morgan Freeman took L's like his whole life. Everyone loves Morgan Freeman. He didn't have success as an actor till he was 45, hmm. 45. Now he's like 
beloved Morgan Freeman, Melissa McCarthy, uh, and then Samuel L. Jackson, same thing. He was like waiting tables. He was in LA for like decades trying to make this thing happen. Audition after audition, he said, I'm Samuel L. Mother effing Jackson. You know, he said that at some point. Yeah. And then he finally got his break with like Pulp Fiction when he was like 45. Like there is just no reason to assume that whatever your age is or like your circumstances, mm. your origin story, that's bananas. It, it, it's nonsense. You can have it. It's an internal like source code, just like you said. It's like, mm, I'm shifting it. So what is internal source code? How do we, we call that? That's our identity, guys. Because what you were persistent at and what they were persistent at was their belief in the identity of themselves, right? Rather than just the definition of I'm going to get this goal or whatever the goal is because mm. the goal posts may change, the anchor points may change along oh, yeah. the way. Right, but the persistence of the identity of yourself is going to push it. Um, oh, earlier yeah. today, you and I were meeting with a gentleman who's quite successful here in the Scottsdale area, and he was moving out of his home. And a guy who was there, I forget what kind of service he was there for, but he asked this gentleman, "Pest control." Pest control. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So My he asked. I'm a he, <laughs> <laughs> he asked the guy. He's like looking at me like, "Oh, you got a great house. You got a fancy cars." Like, hey, what is it that you do? And this guy, who's very successful, is trained. He said, hey, that's not the right question. You're going to be asking me, what kind of person, who did I have to become to get all this stuff? How Damn. do you, who do you need to become? And then who do you need to become? Fire. Right? So we go around asking the wrong questions sometimes as a society. We're trying to get data and we're trying to model, but we're asking the wrong questions. And usually the questions that we need to ask are the ones we haven't considered yet. <laughs> that's fire. I looked on this list again. Jeremy Renner. Literally until he was 38, didn't get a break. He so plays uh, Falcon, or no, Hawkeye. Oh. He plays Hawkeye in the Avengers, but his break was the Hurt Locker. He was in LA for like at least close to 20 years trying to make the acting thing happen. And then I he heard landed. great things about him. He's such a stud. It's like the list, it's just like literally just like the shortest list, and it's 30 people, all people I've heard. They all grinded at something for decades, and they believed in themselves. Alan, Alan Rickman, come on. Yep. So here's the big question, right, for our listeners and viewers. How do we have that, 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 dis so the word, whatever the word is, that describes from, describes someone going from where they were to that breakthrough. How often time, how often do we hear these stories and we're like, well, that sounds like later in life or middle you know, when they're, you know, in the middle of their career or some, for some people it's early, how do we make it more predictable? Hmm. How can we have that earlier? That's actually one of the most important things that we do at Upgrade is systematically looking at how to create that success predictably. Now, let me define success with another perspective, which is similar to what I said earlier. Success is when your external physical reality aligns with your internal mental emotional reality. But what most people don't know is they are living the most successful version of their life. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to sound weird for a moment. What does that even mean? People think that they're not as successful as they want to be but they are actually as successful as their being, their identity can be. So their physical environment, physical external world is actually aligned with their internal world. They just don't think it is because they have a <laughs> conscious idea of where they should be, where they could be, and yet completely ignorant and unconscious of all the thoughts and emotions and habits that they have and the equations and programs they run in their mind about reality. That is is 99% of what's going on in their mind that they're unconscious of. And that's what's actually reflecting and projecting into their physical world. So to be truth to be told, our external world is just aligned with our internal world, but most people are unwilling to admit it. And they're as successful as they can be at that moment. But, Snap. but this is why we call ourselves Upgrade. We literally upgrade that internal operating system, which we're not consciously aware of. And that is what causes the physical world to become more successful. We don't promise any financial return. We don't promise any sort of return. What we do 
is we help people optimize who they are internally. And that inevitably causes things to change externally. Hmm. And so that's I, huge. If you're new to this, that's please re bananas. listen to that. Yeah. Like rewind, re listen to that because. Uh, when I realized that first working with you, it was a bit of a harsh wake up for me initially that, hey, I actually am the most successful version that I can be right now because in my mind, that's how I've designed it. And that's all I've designed. So my external mirror right now, reality, is what I've designed. But then it was that flip side of like, but I can learn how to design better. So there's an opportunity here for me. If I learn how to design better, learn how to design my software better, then my external reality will match it. And I remember speaking to some of our students along the way when I was getting coaching, they're like, a lot of our entrepreneurs are very successful, right? And they say they think big, but they've never learned how to design big. So like the 90 year challenge to them, we're like, this is freaking hard, man. 100 material items, 100 experiences, 90 year timeline. Like I think I'm a big thinker, but like, this is hard. I'm like, there's a difference between thinking big and designing big. Huge. Massive difference. And when you design big, your external reality begins to match up. It's confirmation bias, right? So if you are hearing that, what William just said, and you're like, man, it's a little bit of a harsh thing, but it is true opportunity for you now. You can learn how to get that skill set of designing. Well, dude, our brains are antennas. Like they are connected if you want to go, go through this direction for a second, they're connected to this cosmic web that kind of weaves all things together. We just did like five episodes in a row of David Morehouse. And if it isn't like crystal freaking clear by now, <laughs> our brains, our antennas, and supercomputers that can download at rapid speeds. With a projector attached to it. With a projector attached to it. So what the yeah. heck are you putting in there, you know? And if you're, it's like, okay, yeah, this is like, I think big, I aspire big. But then to design it is to create it for the first time in your head, I'll give you an example. I was describing to my my brother. He was going through some some times. He was a uh, shift between work or whatever. And I told him about like my story. After five years of doing door to door, I left the industry. I went across the street, and I'm describing this in text, right? So my brain is is creating. It's playing back the movie. I got my Forerunner. I went across the street. I went to Wolverine Crossing, and I went to uh, this company, Proof Pass Control. And I said, hey. I want to go with you and film your uh, incentive trip video that you do for your sales guys. I want to film that and then we'll come back and I want to film sales training videos for you guys. Now, here's what I need to survive. Do we have a deal? And I said, those guys gave me my first shot when I went out on my own. And since Ooh. then, everything has changed. I sent that text message to my yeah, that's brother. That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I sent that text message. 30 seconds later, the CEO, the one that I was just describing to my brother, texted me out of the blue. I hadn't talked to him in over a year. 30 seconds later, hey man, I was just thinking about you. Hope you're doing well. We should meet up. He's coming to the studio this week. So the synchro destiny, my brain's ability to create was like super vivid in my head. I remember I relived the moment and that brain sent, if you are tracking with us, it sent I've a seen signal. you do crazy things with your mind. <laughs> Win the house, find my cat. The we send should a do signal. it more often. I all right, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, we should sit down and do that. Yeah. For real. But it sent a signal and, into it's the worked ether. literally every time. It popped up and it's like, dude, <laughs> the create. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the creation of the brain, if you can get it to not just go, yeah, I think big, I'm not, I, I have no more ceilings. It's like, congratulations, your ceilings are gone. How tall can you build your building now if there's no ceiling? So in the creation part of that, you were sending signals out into the cosmic landscape, into the ether, into the things that connect all of us. I'm not rubbing a crystal here, guys. This is just a real fact. There's science behind it. If you don't believe me, listen to the David Morehouse episodes. But you are creating an outcome for yourself by designing, by saying, this is the color of the seatbelts in the car that I want, by saying, this is the type of floor that I want in the house that I will have, the kind of life that I want, not just, golly gosh, wouldn't that be neat? It's all the way down there. It's like, no, 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 no. When it happens... I already have the plan. Mm. I have the schematics. And your brain is in a very creative, it's an engine. It's, it's printing it out and then just plopping it ahead of you. I can't stress it enough. It's so rad when you start designing your life and then it starts coming to you. And Here's a crazy thought. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're good. Go ahead. I'll tell the crazy thought in a second. I was going to say that text message that you received back from uh -huh. a gentleman that you hadn't talked to in a while. Yeah. That's the sign that, you know, the fabric of reality is not as solid as we seem and we think it to be for real because what we're perceiving as reality is just our reality in our mind right 
all the things I've learned with Upgrade, talking to David and just doing ex exploration of the mind, it's like, that's just my reality. Okay? So if I begin to design it differently, well, then the reality might change in return. So it's not as solid as we seem. If you get caught up in the, I have zero success, you're just looking through your definition of reality right now. And you can mm. design it differently. Yes. So here's the crazy thought. It's even better that you said that now. A crazy thought for everyone to consider is imagine between your mental world and the physical world, there's a portal. And this portal has a lock and key. And in order for you to pass anything you want from your mind into the physical, for it to become tangible, which we want, right? If something... Now, we don't want everything from our mind to pass through because for those who haven't resolved their stuff in their mind and they have traumas, negative emotions, and negative thoughts in the from the past or present, if the door just swings open, that's bad news. So naturally, our mind has a protective mechanism. doesn't let everything through. But historically, humans have invented a fascinating tool. In fact, there are two ways to enter the door. One is through pen and paper, mm. the pen being the key as they write and design. As your thoughts get edged into the physical world symbolically, we create a language, right? This is why linguistics is important because written language is one form of transmitting from the physical, well, from the mental plane into the physical plane. This piece of paper is a portal. And the pen is our key. And your hand is literally transmitting mental and or non-physical plane data into the physical, objectifying it, right? Into the physical. And my language is the symbols. Yeah. Mm. Language is the symbols. And then the other way of opening the door is opening up your mouth. Your mouth is the portal door. You open it, what you say there's a frequency it carries with, and it's a physical representation in sound vibrational form of the thoughts inside our, of our mind. So if someone thinks what they say doesn't have an effect on the physical, they are forcing their brain to shut the door, to eliminate meaning behind their words. So they wonder why when they want to create and speak some things they want, and they don't happen, right? So we have to gradually train our minds to trust ourselves, our minds to trust ourselves, and train it to realize the energy we transmit, we mean it, we're sincere about it, and it's actually with loving thoughts. And I can't stress it enough because too often time people who are seeking success and confidence forget, yet they ought to remember that love is one of the most powerful powerful ways to open the door hmm. of creation. In fact, not to go into this rabbit hole, not, not going to go through that because it's going to be a big one. Um, when humans, well, we can talk about creation, human creation, when humans have sex and create a baby, right? Well, think about for a moment, think about it for a moment what's going on there, the portal opens and there's a human being that comes out, right? Eventually at the end of the process. But what brings the two humans together? And I mean, I'm not talking about in all cases, but I would say if it was done by design, it would be love that actually brings the human being into existence. And so love was the original cap, well, the best word would be catalyst, mm. but also it's the original idea. It's the original emotion is the original power, the magnetic pole that brings the polars together into one becoming one, right? The male and female becoming one. And that, and, and once again, it's a big rabbit hole, but I'll say one more thing in the Bible. This is not to say one book or another, but this is what I found in the Bible they talk about how husbands should know their wife. Now, it's not just sexual, right? Because if you know what that means in, in the ancient scripture is knowing means, you know, have sex and 
you know, husband know their wife, they create babies, but they also mean something more to that. There's more to that. If the husband, the masculine, the conscious, the representation of the conscious mind, knows the feminine, the representation of the unconscious mind, and the two come together, becoming one mind, creation occurs. A secret lying in plain sight that the, when the conscious and the unconscious become one, creation in the physical occurs. Hmm. However, how often are our conscious mind forcing the unconscious mind to create? The gross act of forcing a creation. Humans do it all the time. They are forcing themselves to create while it's completely illegal to force a woman to have sex with a man, right? Mm. So think about for a moment, why would we force our own unconscious mind, which is the representation of our own feminine inside, to create for us when they're not aligned and there's no love? And this love is lacking towards ourselves, towards others. So I promote that a society with love Hey, look, we're all human. I don't expect everyone to be able to love everyone. However, have we actually attempted that love towards oneself first? I think that is required. I'm not saying you should love everyone, but you should love yourself for sure. Mm. Because first off, if you don't love yourself, it would be harder to love others anyway. But if you don't love yourself, your conscious and unconscious aren't going to be as aligned. And that portal, you can try to write, you can try to speak. It won't be the same. When you love yourself, confidence and success are just simply a byproduct. And in my perspective, being around very successful people, not all, I'm not going to make a generalization, most truly successful entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs and business people out there, they have what you're talking about in terms of that love for themselves. Some of the most loving people are the people who are super successful because they've learned to love themselves first, right? And then they've they've opened up their life. And that might be my perception of it too, right? There's probably some things people are dealing with, right? A hold underneath. But in generally, in my experience, most people I meet who are very successful are oper operating with massive love too. Because they know to give it to themselves first, they can give it to the others. And what you were talking about earlier with the force, that's where we talk about so much with Upgrade, the emotional state, our state. Forced usually is an uh, anger emotion, right? Or it's a greed emotion, or it's like a mm. hurt emotion. So it's a forceful emotion versus unconditional love. That's power. And it's the power of just unconditional love. It, there's a completely different feeling wow. aspect of it, like force versus power. Jeez. Probably leave a nice cliff hang, a cliffhanger on this I one. I think I love the <laughs> mic drop. It's, this is an amazing episode, guys. If you're a new listener, I would go back to our beginning episodes. We did, we talked about the very first. Oh, yeah, in the first like ten, we talked about creation a lot. I think this uh, eighty-five percent of people report struggling with confidence in your life. So if today, like you found yourself here, and in the past or right now, you're like, yeah, like I feel like I've kind of you know, kind of fumbled my confidence, or I fumbled this girl, or this job isn't what I want. Take these principles and just realize that like starting now, end of this episode, you've got every reason to just start believing in yourself and, and start designing a little bit more of what you want. And if your confidence level was like basically at zero because of the successes in your past and your rear view, put a 1% on the board. Hell, put a 10% on the board because you found this. And if you're listening to us, mm -hmm. know that we believe in you and that counts for something. So go out and find a win today. Start Guys. to love yourself. Yeah. That's really a good good beginning, right? I appreciate that. Keep going. No, I was just about to wrap it up. Just gonna say, thanks for listening. Let's get some t-shirts out there. Love yourself. Upgrade. That's kind of fire. Oh. This is like a little heart in the center of the symbol this time. I still want the pink elephant t-shirt. Pink elephant. Calvin, class. where are we at? Calvin, I sent him the, <laughs> the design for mid journey. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll follow up. Okay. See you next time. Life is good and it gets better every day.